This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Our self esteem is so broken, like we lost our identity in such a critical way that we cannot even understand what's our purpose anymore, what's our goal, what's our mission in life because we don't recognize who we are. It's uh, not from an, such an empty reason that the worst destruction that took place at our nation's life was the horrible Holocaust and the main issue and so-called reason their agenda of attacking us was humiliating and destroying our self-esteem comparing us to the worst filthiest creatures in the universe and that was one of the ancient methods of different religions and different nations that were blaming Jewish people in all ancient times on being evil, on being horrible and we ourselves, we know our nature, we know who we are. We know in the bottom of our hearts, in the essence of our being that we are good people, we know it. Like we can see ourselves also misbehaving, we can see ourselves and people from our nation that are failing like and also big times but to set such a definition on a whole nation of like devils and evils and, and, and dark and like that's a joke. We know exactly from which roots we're coming, we know who we are. We know how our ancestors and the righteous ones of all the generations, we know exactly who built and designed our nation. We know from what material we made of. We know who we are. But the main challenge that we're facing always in this lifetime, in this world, in all the generations was that you won't see who you are and you will be blamed on being someone totally else means the opposite of who you are, forget your identity. And that was exactly what the, the Greeks decreed on us in ancient times and like told us that people in our generation, in, in, uh, in, in their generation, Jewish people were not allowed to circumcise their children, they were not allowed to eat kosher, they were not allowed to keep Shabbat. All those things were only to erase from our minds our real identity. And the clearest evidence for that, that in that generation they forced us, decreed on us, that we will write in front of our eyes that sign, you don't have a share, a portion in Eloke Israel. En lecha chelek beloke Israel. Like people that were working, plowing and, and, and riding, they had to put that sign in front of their eyes that all day long it's going to play in your mind, you don't have a share in heaven, you don't have part with heaven, you don't have portion of godliness, you're not it, it's not you. <clears throat> Only why? Because it's you and the war is on you. Robbers, thieves, they're going to steal precious things. They're looking for gold, they're looking for diamonds. The evil inclination that is fighting with us are fighting with us because of who we are. Because we are the good and they're trying to turn off that good. And I'm not talking about the nations, I'm talking about the evil inclination. I'm talking about those ones that are falling in that trap of evil inclination and start with all of their desire to do as much as they can to turn off the light of this holy nation. Now what happened? There is a covenant, there is a like, rule in heaven that there is a Brit lelashon hara shemit kabelet. When someone is saying something awful, something bad, and you heard it, you're in a problem. It's already been accepted. 
like you don't want it, but the prohibition, what that is not allowed for us to do, is not only to talk Lashon Hara, to say bad things on someone else, it's also not to hear Lashon Hara, not to hear negative things, not about him and not about yourself, you're not allowed. Why? Because if you're going to hear it, just going to hear it one time, that's it, you lost it. You are not balanced anymore. It's inside of you and now it's, it's playing in your mind. It will come back. If you hear filthy things, wrong things, criticism, even just on you, it's destroying your self-esteem. You are not who you could have been if you wouldn't hear all those insultings, all those rebukes, all those criticisms. You've been changed, been destroyed, been defected by those rebukes, by those shames and insultings. What happened to you because of all those negative words? Your self-esteem went low. And today you think to yourself that you are horrible, that you are hopeless, that you are worthless, that you are disgusting, that you're stupid, that you're dumb, that you won't have a share in the world to come. All the nonsense, all the lies. All the filthy words, Lashon Hara, that been spoken on you. And why, why, why it been spoken on us? Why they said those horrible things about us? And it could have been even our parents. It could have been even our teachers. It could have been friends from high school. It, like everyone. Why people are judging you in a negative way? Why people are attacking you and trying to fight with you on who you are? Check yourself, don't check them, don't judge them. Try to check yourself. When you are failing in criticizing someone else, why are you doing that? Why is it happening to you that you're upset on that person, that you're angry with him, that you have something to tell him, that you want to revenge, that you want to attack? Usually from my life experience, again, when I'm offering you to do that on yourself, I can just share it, my life experience with, with you on what I came to, to understand about myself. Usually when I'm judging someone else, when I have negative thoughts on someone, when I recognize a default in someone, I'm recognizing something that I hate about myself. I see someone that let's say he's lazy, it's because I hate that laziness when I'm lazy. I hate myself for being lazy and when I see him like Am I supposed to care if you choose to lie down on the sofa for four hours, like for six hours? It's your life, like live your life on the sofa, build your house in, on the sofa. Like why that I'll care? I'm not supposed to care if you chose to, to drown yourself in like in your stupidities. Like it's, it's your life, you're not affecting my life. When am I bothered when I recognize something that I hate? from my ins inside, from inside of my own life. And then I find it hard to accept because, not because that I'm defected in it, because I am not willing to work on myself and to improve. When I'm really being lazy about working on my laziness, that's when I hate it, when I recognize it in you. Not because that I care. Because that I hate myself for being lazy, from working on my laziness. And when I'm scared, and I see you that you're scared, and I hate to see you when you're scared, the problem is not that you're scared. If I see you that you're scared, I should have mercy on you. I should come and help you. Why that I would care? Why that I will hate the fact that you're scared? Why that I'll be angry and won't respect you because you're scared? Because I know that not only that I'm scared in certain situations in my life, also I'm scared to deal with my fears. And that's where my problem starts with that issue of fear. Because I'm too afraid, too scared to deal with my own fears and I hate myself for that. And that's why I'm upset on you, that you're reminding me of myself, that you're opening my eyes, that we need to deal with our fears. And I don't want to see that mirror. That mirror becomes to be my enemy, only because of my fears, only because of my laziness. That I don't want to deal with what that I don't want to deal. 
I rather to push it, to deny it, to erase it, to remove it. Now when people blamed us for generations, and even our parents, and even like 10 minutes ago, it doesn't matter when it happened, it happened to you because they had a problem with themselves. Like that when you have problems with yourself, you're going and attacking others. So what did it mean? Conclusion, what to do with all that amazing information is not to take those rebukes so seriously. Unless you want to start working on yourself and then you have an opportunity. Not to be insulted from those rebukes, not to be ashamed and don't let it stab you and ashamed you and destroy you and erase your self-esteem. Don't buy it. It's his problem that he is attacking you right now and you don't need to be attacked by his attacks. He's just talking to you. Imagine to yourself that it's a box with teeth that he's talking. It's a puppet. It's, it's the Muppet Show. They're talking. Let them yap. Let them talk. Like they can talk forever. Really, their words cannot kill you unless you're going to take them to your heart. Unless you're going to take them seriously. Oh, but why he said it. And he said it in the worst way that he could. Why, why, are, you, why, why are you throwing yourself into that swamp, into that filth? Don't let it in. Now, if you do want not to ignore a message and you want to tilt your ear, you want to listen, you want to try to find some wisdom in what that the Creator supervised on you, brought in the Hashgacha Pratit into your life to, to teach you something, so then you can listen to the rebuke and to try to see why is it really hurting you, but only if you're willing to improve. Not to break your self-esteem, just to learn something good from it. To learn something good from it. That's the only way that you should deal with rebukes and with negativity. Only if you check yourself and you say, hey, I have power. Now I can deal with that. You know what? From him, from her, I want to listen. If now you walk in the street and someone starts calling you names, you don't have to say, oh, listen, I'm sorry, tell me what you meant. You don't need to burn your time and your life on every crazy person in the street. For sure. And especially when you live in this neighborhood. So like, don't burn your life. Continue, move with, continue with your walk. But in reality, in life, when let's say you are married, you have someone that is important to you in your life and he's part of your life. He's a precious, important person and he found it right to rebuke you. You can listen to it. But if you see that it's just a pattern, it's a violent person, it's an angry person, someone that is not taking responsibility on his life and who is he to rebuke you? So you don't need to follow his rebukes. You should just like find your way out and to go and live your life elsewhere in an environment that will be more accepting, more respecting, more allowing, more permitting for you to be who you are. You don't need to let that flipping sword of criticism to destroy your life just because it came out of a parent, out of a rabbi's mouth, out of a I don't know who. No one in this world has the permission to kill you. No one. No one in this world has the permission to insult you, to break your spirit. When can you or you should learn from a rebuke? When you recognize that the rebuke is coming from an honest person. When you recognize that that broken person, that that hurt person is rebuking you on a certain thing that you really did. That you really upset him, that you really disrespected him, that you really were not appreciating him enough on something that he really did for you, that he really loves you. Then the rebuke is coming from a holy source, from a good source and from that kind of rebuke, it's a merit to learn. It's an important, it's a precious lesson. It's good to learn and to listen. But like that Hashem said to Abram, He told him, Everything that Sarah, your wife, she will tell you, you should listen to her voice. Hashem never told him you should follow her commandments, you should do what that she will tell you. Hashem told him to Abram, you should listen to her voice because the voice holds inside of it the intention. 
When someone tells you something, I remember my wife, she told me many times, I hate you. She told me those words, I hate you. But in reality, always, you can ask her, always when she said, I hate you, she meant to say, I love you. I expect from so, for so much from you. I was counting on you. I, my hopes were on you. I thought we were best friends and you disappointed me. But she didn't know how to put it in right words. It was like she was hurt in that moment. And the feeling of her heart, of her disappointment, found itself being expressed in those words that were sharp and, 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 and cutting and, and rebuking me. But when they came, they came because that really I hurt her feeling. But if I would take the words, oh, I hate you, and I would go with that, so I wouldn't listen to the intention. I would ignore the wisdom and the real essence of that rebuke. I wouldn't take all the wisdom that's been transferred to me by Hashem in His godly supervision on my life to fix me, to heal me. Because the Creator, He rebukes the ones He loves. Et asher yohav, Hashem yochiach. He rebukes you because He is hoping from you to take it seriously and to learn. But you can learn only from someone that loves you, not from someone that hates you or someone that ignores you. If someone doesn't care about you and he's just busy in destroying your self-esteem, that's not an accepted rebuke. This is not something that you should welcome. It's not something that you should learn from because it's coming from an impure source. That attack is coming from the side of the evil inclination. It's coming out of the heart of someone that is not willing to fix himself, that is not seeking and looking for answers in his own life and ways to fix. Just he wants to keep on ignoring his lackings. He's not recognizing himself as the one to, to be blamed on the things that he's throwing on you and he's just piling all of his trash on you because he doesn't want to deal with his inner problems. So when rebuke is coming from that filthy source, from a negative source, from a dark source, that is a rebuke that you should block, that you should not let in. But when the rebuke is coming out of love, out of pain, out of sorrow, out of a good source of honesty, of friendship, built on loyalty and respect. When someone is rebuking you because you are his friend, because he believes that you respect him and now suddenly he saw that you behaved in a disrespectful way and he feels real disappointment from you. That is a rebuke that you should take as a treasure. It's a merit, it's a blessing to learn the lesson from someone that loves you. Now, the main enemy that we recognize until now is that enemy that is coming and breaking our self-esteem. That happens to us when we are taking the rebukes, the criticism, the insultings that are coming from a dark source, from a negative source, from someone that is not willing to help us through his rebukes, just he's coming to throw all of his garbage on us. So when we are buying his nonsense, his <coughs> negativity, his sadness, his bad attributes that have been thrown on us, we are creating to ourselves this negative image, this, uh, this character that is not really who we are. And then when someone offers you a job, you're too scared to take that job. Why? Because you don't believe in your abilities anymore. When someone is offering to you to go on a shidduch to find your soulmate, to go, to succeed, to move, to do something with your life, you're too scared to do it. Why? Because you heard Lashon Ara about yourself. You took inside negative words, bad words about yourself, 
and you've been poisoned by those words and you fell in that trap of the evil inclination to destroy your self-esteem, to humiliate you and to bring you to that rock bottom, to that place that you will forget who you are and you're going to lose your identity and going to lose your power. Going to drop by yourself in your own hands your potential, your greatness. The treasures that are treasured inside of you, your qualities, your talents, all the amazing things, your sensitivity, your sense of humor, your wisdom, your knowledge, all the true colors of your soul, of your spirit. And you just drop it because you, in your own hands, using your own free choice to choose to walk in the darkness. To follow the words of people that disrespect you, that don't appreciate you, that doesn't take it seriously to care about you and to think about your needs. And they're just willing to destroy and to break and to erase you and your name and your identity because they just want one thing for you, from you. That you will keep on serving, that you will keep on working, that you will keep on supplying, that you will work for them, that you, to slavery you forever. That's what they want. They need a slave. And they found you. Now, from that slavery, we must walk away. That is our main enemy. And this is why the redemption is compared to Freedom Day, to Day of Liberty. Because in that day, we all gonna be saved from our inner prison. The prison of our mind. The prison of our low self-esteem. The prison of losing our identity. When you are free, when you can grow, when you feel good with yourself, when you're creating, when you're doing, when you're allowed to be who you are, when you can express your feelings, when you can think and your opinion counts, means something, when you see that you can be who you are, then you're free. But when they're telling you that you cannot be who you are, that you should not do what you think, and that you should not go with your feelings, and you cannot count on your will, so who are you? Who am I? You became an empty person, a useless person, a stupid person, an ignorant person, a worthless person, and that's it. Why to live? Like if I'm nothing and I can't achieve anything, so what's the purpose of my life? There's no purpose. That's why you need to fight against that method, against that darkness, no matter where it's coming from. Unless you recognize that you hurt that person and now he's just telling you, hey, you're, 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 you're blocking me, you're destroying me, you're hurting me. And then it's not fair. And then you need to listen to that rebuke. But when you are being rebuked, you need to check yourself. What really do I feel about that rebuke? Is that rebuke an honest rebuke? Because inside of you, you have that sense. You have that ability to sense and to feel the truth about every situation. Divrei emet nikarim. Words of truth can be recognized. The Creator put it, installed it into the nature of the creation. When someone tells you something, hey, you're a thief, you know if you're stolen or not. Now, you can tell whatever, you can respond in any way you'll choose. But if someone now is blaming you on something, you know it, the truth about that thing. If it was on $700, if it was on 70 cents, in reality you know exactly what you were doing and, and, and acting, how you were acting about that money. That you now just been blamed on stealing it. If you took it, if you had thoughts about it, if you were negative, you know it, you know. You know because you remember who you were while ca counting the money, while taking the money, while accepting the well, yeah, whatever. Transferring, you know where you were holding while delivering the money from point A to point B. You know the truth. Now you can lie about it, you can say no. But the truth is that you know about yourself the real truth. So when someone is rebuking you, you know if he is right in that rebuke or that he's just hurting you. You know the truth. When your wife, I'm talking about my life, when my wife, she's telling me, for an example, I said it once in class, I used that example. 
when she told me something about the uh, about helping in the eve of Shabbat, like tons of things to do before of Shabbat, and like and she told me, why why aren't you helping? So I came immediately and I told her I want to help. So she said no. She stopped and she said no. If you would really want to help, you would have helped. You're standing and you're saying, I want to help. You don't see, like, you don't see that the, the floor needs the, the cleaning. You don't see that there are dishes. They're like, what are you waiting for? Orders? Am I supposed to be your commander? No, it's not true. You were not truthful. I was not truthful. I said, no, I want to help. No, that was a lie. I didn't want to help. If I would want to help, I would help. I didn't want it to help. Now, when she said that, when someone is telling you the truth, you know the truth. Because words of truth can be recognized because the Creator made the world like that, you know the truth. And that's the secret of being righteous, of being holy, of being a Talmud Chacham, of being pure, of being whatever you dream of. I'm telling you, as long as you keep on lying to yourself, you're nothing, you're a zero, you're not with Hashem. You're not a person of truth. You can wear the uniform of the Orthodox community. You can act like the most radical and most fanatic religious person, Hasidic, foolish person in the world. You are a Hasid Shoteir, a foolish person that acting in a Hasidish way. Nonsense. You're nothing. You're zero. You're nothing but a liar. But if you're a holy person, if you want to hold the truth, and when you recognize that you're a liar, you're going and you do tshuva, then you know what, which level you can reach? The highest. And for an example, a small example, a tiny example. When King David became the fourth will of the holy chariot of heaven, the head to our ancestors, to the Avot. When? In which time in his life? After commanding a soldier to go and die in the war because he desired and wanted to marry his wife and after he been killed that soldier King David really took his widow wife got married with her and had children and then Nathan the prophet came and rebuked him and what did he told him he told him you know a story, I want to tell you a story. There was a person and he was rich and walked in the street. And one day he saw a beautiful sheep, a very nice sheep. And he wanted that sheep for himself. And he went and looked for the honors of that sheep. And he saw that the honor of that sheep was a poor farmer. So what he did, he commanded his people to kill that poor farmer and he stolen the sheep from him and took the sheep for himself. Can you tell me please King David, what is the punishment for that thief, for that cruel, rich, wealthy person that just stolen that poor sheep from its owner and killed him? So he told him, Ben Mavetu, you should kill that man. Nathan the prophet told him, it's you. All that story that I told you is really going on you. Why? And King David looked and he told him and explained to him exactly how he was that rich person that stolen that sheep from that poor farmer. You are a king. A king in those days were, uh, was allowed to marry 18 women. He already had few women, I don't remember how many, maybe 18, maybe 17. And he needed that one. You know what King David did? The king! He said, you are right. He admitted. And he did tshuva. He accepted that rebuke. And he did tshuva on it. He regret on it. And he was willing to die to pay his debt. He did a complete tshuva on that. And in that moment in heaven, they declared, they made him to be the head to the ancestors, the forewill of the holy chariot. Why? Why? Such a horrible act. Look what we're talking about. What he had in his mind. How could he think about doing something like that? King David. The test of standing in the shames and insultings of life and to do tshuva, to accept the rebuke and to fix 
brings you to a higher level than a righteous man. Because in a place of a Baal Tshuva, even a complete righteous man cannot stand. In a place of the person that he admits on his mistakes, and he's able to take responsibility on it, and he's willing to change, even a complete righteous man that never sinned in his life cannot stand, cannot reach that level. And we, that we know our crimes, that we recognize our darkness, that we know how many thousands of times we messed up in the worst things of our lives, in the most critical moments of our life, we disappointed ourselves. We disappointed our beloved ones. Probably also disappointed heaven. We don't know. But if we will take that humiliation and gonna work on ourselves to improve, to fix ourselves, we will reach the level that will be even higher than the level of the angels, even than the level of the prophets. Only because of humility. Only because of the inner desire to work on yourself, to take responsibility and to fix yourself. At Asher Yoav Hashem Yochiach, the Creator, He rebukes the one He loves because He believes in them. Like the, the first sentence that we're saying in the morning. We're thanking you Hashem, Melechai Vekayam, a life and exist King. That you gave me my soul back. Your faith is great. Your faith? What do you mean your faith? Which faith? Hashem's faith? In what Hashem believes? Hashem believes in the Creator. He is the Creator. He believes in the Bible. He wrote the Bible. What he believes in? Why am I thanking him on his great belief? That he believes in me. That he gave me my soul back. Because he believes that I can do a holy work with my soul. That's why I woke up my eyes this morning. If Hashem would give up on me, I wouldn't wake up this morning. But Hashem had hope. Hashem had faith in me. He saw the qualities of my soul. He saw the positivity and the good energy of my spirit. And He gave me a chance to continue and work on myself and to fix myself. To do tshuva is to give yourself a chance. It's to give yourself another opportunity to fix and to clean all the things that you feel that you messed up. Don't be scared of work. Don't be lazy. Don't let your fears surrender you and knock you down. Fight with your fears. Deal with your negative thoughts. Rise and build your self-esteem. Come back to the nature that is planted inside of you to be who you are and go and reveal to the world your treasures, your holy qualities, the gifts that have been given to you by the Creator through your soul. The light that is shining from within, the light of your spirit, the light of your neshama. Go and be who you are. People are scared to be who they are. People are scared to follow their inner senses, to count on themselves, because they fell in that trap of listening to negative words, to bad words, to filthy words about yourselves, about themselves. Now you think to yourself that you are that lousy person that you have been described as by your parents, by your siblings, by your friends, by your co-workers, by your boss, by whatever. Everyone has something to say about you, always. Your problem is that you listen to those nonsense. Ignore it. Look at your own eyes, check yourself. If you find yourself filthy, disgusting, horrible, work on yourself. You don't need to hear it from someone else. If you recognize inside of yourself that you're acting bad, that you're being mean, that you're selfish, that you're lazy, work on your attributes if you want to work. You don't need to follow negative words, rebukes that will destroy your happiness and your self-esteem, will erase your identity, will create you and shape you in as a dark, dark creation, dark person. Oh, you're horrible, so lazy, so pathetic. No, I'm not. 
When you fall in that trap of those definitions of negative opinions of people that are negative about themselves like we said before and you follow their negative opinions and you take their words like it's Torah that came from heaven so your character is being designed in a negative way and that's why you're scared to be who you are because you think that you are horrible you think that you are that you're pathetic you think that you will never succeed but it's only because you're still not recognizing who you really are. When you will know who you are, you won't be scared of anything. You will walk. You will walk on water. You're going to walk on air. You're going to walk into the fire. You won't be scared. Like all the righteous, real righteous people, not those ones that are calling themselves righteous. Those ones that really can walk into fire and not die from the flaming fire, from the flaming heat. From those ones we should learn, not from those ones that are calling themselves in names and titles, chief rabbi, main rabbi, the head of the Aguda, I don't know which Aguda. Nonsense! <laughs> Jokers! Jokes! People! Nonsense! You don't need to follow people, you need to search for the truth! People are looking like I don't know who, like... Sick people, broken people, actors with hemorrhoids, <laughs> with migraines. Really, like people that don't know how to deal with their life and going and running institutes and making money and whatever, decreeing on others. What are they going to do in Judgment Day? You know what's going to happen to those pathetic people in Judgment Day? Liars, pretenders, thieves, people that are abusing the weak, taking advantage of weak and poor. Do you know what will happen to those people in Judgment Day? In this world or in the world to come? That's scary. Sof davar kol nishma. In the end of time, everything will be heard. The world to come is Judgment Day. It's not Kindness Day. It's not a Happening Day. It's Judgment Day. You will be judged. Every person will be judged on every thought, on every word, on every act. If he was scamming, he will pay. If he was stealing, he will pay. If he was lying, he will pay. You think that his title, that his hat, that his suit, that his money will protect him in Judgment Day? He will never going to see the face of Hashem. Angels of darkness, horses of, of fire will burn him alive. Predators, dogs that look like mountains will eat him before he will reach the stand. No one can talk, no one can lie in front of Hashem. You think you can lie forever? You cannot lie forever. The grace, the kindness exists in this world and that's it. Because here in this world you can do tshuva. You can fix. That's the only opportunity that's been given to us to fix our lies. Our negative and bad character. To work on ourselves. To cleanse ourselves. To purify ourselves. To recognize the truth. And if we're recognizing that there are things that we need to work on, so come on, let's work. That's what we're here for. To listen to the lesson and to work on ourselves and to fix ourselves. And not to let negative powers to destroy our lives. And to drown us in the sea of despair and sadness, to give up. No, I don't see no hope. You fell in the trap. You gave the will to someone else to drive your car. Why are you doing that? You should be the holy chariot. You should do tshuva. King David was able to do tshuva on the worst thing in the world. Can you think of something worse than that? It's horrible. He did tshuva. And that's his greatness. That he was able not to hide and not to claim and not to justify himself and to plaster everything. He had enough money to erase this story from the Bible. He could execute Natana Navi if he would want in a second. There wouldn't be no memory from Natana Navi. If King David would want to kill him, he was dead. But he didn't want to kill him. 
He wants to thank him for rebuking him and fixing him and giving him an opportunity to do tshuva, to come back from being blind and stuck in his issues. And he took it seriously to work and he worked on himself. And then he reached the level of being Mashiach. Can you understand what we're talking about? Mashiach! Yes. When you're honest, when you're a person of truth, you're a person of Hashem. You're Isha Elohim. You're the man of truth, a man of God. A person with no connection to how many times you messed up before. You're going to only be rewarded on doing tshuva. And if you're doing tshuva out of love, the sins becomes to be your merit. You're going to be rewarded on fixing those sins. A reward that no righteous man can enjoy from because he never sinned. How can he fix those things that he never did? He cannot. When a Baal Tshuva is keeping Shabbat, he's not only keeping it, he's also not violating it. A righteous man, he doesn't have that yet, sir, that, that desire to break Shabbat. When he sees people driving to the beach, he doesn't desire going with them to the beach. He doesn't work on himself to hold his horses every hour, every moment. He needs to control his hands, to pull his hands from the iPhone, to pull his hands from his cigarettes, to pull his hands from the radio, to pull his hands from the computer, to pull his hands from his car, to pull his hands from whatever. You don't have that work. You're righteous, right? But me, that I'm a Baal Tshuva, that I'm fixing so much in my life, you cannot imagine my level. And only because that I was so low and I made such a huge distance, I crossed the desert to be in this place. I crossed the ocean. I climbed the mountains of darkness. You're too scared. Do, can you, a righteous man, deal in, in, with, with the horrific experiences that I deal with? Do you know what fear is all about? Have you ever found yourself in a, in a dark hour? Have you tasted bitterness? Do you know what despair means? To be terrified, to suffer from anxieties, to work on your mind, not to lose your mind when you have flashbacks from using drugs or whatever. Do you know those struggles? You don't know what we're talking about. So how can you judge us? People are holding themselves from committing suicides on daily basis. Their reward is the greatest reward that you can imagine. You cannot dream the reward of a person that didn't kill himself on daily basis. You don't know which righteous person he is, how important he is in heaven. Because he is the one that is fighting for the life. And you're not. Your life is cool. You're not fighting. You're learning. You're, you're electronic cigarettes in the Beit Midrash, having fun. A joke. A clown in black and white penguin uniform. Joke. A joke. A joke. A walking joke. We need to convert all the penguins. They need to become pandas. Panda is much cooler than a penguin. <laughs> Panda is a Tshuva. A penguin is an FFB, is frozen from birth. <laughs> you need to be a panda. That's it. Black and white. You can stay black and white. It's perfect. You don't need to change. Just be a panda. Don't be a penguin. Don't be frozen. Be a panda, a kung fu panda. Be a fighter. Fight for your life. You're going to make it. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.